has said it is using a new generation of powerful lasers in Ukraine to burn up drones, deploying some of Moscow's secret weapons. The Ukraine war, it nears its one year anniversary now. In modern warfare, control of the skies is a decisive factor in determining the outcome of any conflict. Air superiority gives a strategic advantage to the side that possesses it, allowing them to strike targets with precision, gather intelligence, and deter enemy attacks. However, achieving air dominance is not an easy task, especially when facing a powerful adversary with advanced fighter jets and drones. Going by this, the U.S. clearly has an advantage as it has a bigger and more technologically advanced air force than Russia. However, Russia has plans to make up for this with a brand new weapon that will help it seize control of its skies. Join us as we discuss Russia's new laser weapon that destroys planes in seconds. Drones and aircraft are very important in modern warfare. They have enabled militaries to conduct operations with greater efficiency, effectiveness, and safety. These weapons can provide valuable intelligence and situational awareness for military commanders and troops on the ground. They can fly over enemy territory and capture high-resolution images, videos, and signals. For instance, the U.S. Predator and Reaper drones are equipped with high-tech surveillance gear that can loiter in the skies for hours and track targets. Similarly, the U.K.'s Watchkeeper drone can provide real-time information on enemy movements and terrain. Drones and aircraft can also launch precise attacks on enemy targets, such as buildings, vehicles, and individuals. They can carry various types of weapons, such as missiles, bombs, and lasers. For example, the U.S. Reaper drone can carry up to four Hellfire missiles and two 500-pound bombs. The Reaper drone was used to kill the Iranian general Qasim Soleimani outside Baghdad airport in January 2020. Another example is the Israeli Harup drone, which can act as a kamikaze weapon by crashing into its target and detonating an explosive warhead. Lastly, drones and aircraft can also assist in delivering supplies, evacuating casualties, and providing communication and navigation services for ground forces. They can reduce the risk of exposure and increase the speed and reliability of transportation. For example, the U.S. K-MAX drone is a helicopter that can autonomously deliver up to 6,000 pounds of cargo to remote locations. The U.K.'s Zephyr drone is a solar-powered aircraft that can fly at high altitudes for months and provide persistent coverage for communications and surveillance. In the ongoing Russia-Ukraine war, Ukraine has used many drones to cause Russia significant damage. For example, Ukraine is using Turkish-made Bayraktar TB2 drones, which are medium-altitude, long-endurance, and armed UAVs. These drones have a range of up to 300 kilometers, can fly for up to 27 hours, and can carry up to four laser-guided munitions. They have successfully destroyed Russian armored vehicles and mobile air defense systems in several strikes. Ukraine first purchased six of these drones from Turkey in 2019, and reports suggest that it might have as many as 42 units by now. Ukraine is also using domestically made R-18 octocopters, which are operated by a volunteer unit called Aerorozvika. These drones are armed with two anti-tank grenades each and can be used to hunt tanks at short ranges. They have been used in the Donbass region since 2021 and have also been deployed against the Russian invasion. Ukraine is also employing various types of loitering munitions, which are drones that can hover over a target area and then dive into it with a warhead. These include the Israeli-made Harup and Harpy, which can detect and attack radar emissions, the Turkish-made Karga-2, which can autonomously identify and attack human targets, and the Ukrainian-made Lanitz-2, which can be launched from a grenade launcher. These drones can be used to disrupt the enemy's command and control, air defense, and logistics. These drones are clearly a problem, and so Russia is now testing a new laser weapon that can destroy drones and aircraft in seconds.
In response to the growing drone threat, the country recently announced that it will now use a new generation of powerful laser weapons in Ukraine to burn up drones, deploying some of Moscow's secret weapons to counter a flood of Western arms supplied to its former Soviet neighbor. President Vladimir Putin had previously unveiled an array of new weapons, including a new intercontinental ballistic missile, underwater nuclear drones, a supersonic weapon, and a new laser weapon in 2018. He claimed that these weapons would ensure Russia's security and sovereignty for decades to come. Little is known about the specifics of the new laser weapon. Putin mentioned one called Perisvet, named after a medieval Orthodox warrior monk Alexander Perisvet, who perished in mortal combat. He said that Perisvet was capable of destroying any target in the air or on the ground. Yuri Borzov, the deputy prime minister in charge of military development, told a conference in Moscow that Perisvet was already being widely deployed and it could blind satellites up to 1,500 kilometers above Earth. He said this would give Russia an edge over its adversaries in space warfare. He also said, though, that there were already more powerful Russian systems than Perisvet that could burn up drones and other equipment. Borisov cited a recent test that was carried out in May of 2023, which he said had burned up a drone five kilometers away within five seconds. He did not reveal the name or the details of the system, but he said it was based on new physical principles and used directed energy. If Perisvet blinds, then the new generation of laser weapons leads to the physical destruction of the target. Thermal destruction. They burn up, Borisov told Russian state television. When asked if such weapons were being used in Ukraine, Borisov said, Yes, the first prototypes are already being used there. He said the weapon was called Zadira. Almost nothing is publicly known about Zadira, but in 2017, Russian media said Russia's state nuclear corporation, Rosatom, helped develop it as part of a program to create weapons-based new physical principles, known by the Russian acronym ONFP. Zadira is believed to be a high-energy laser weapon that can destroy or disable targets at long distances. It is reportedly mounted on a large truck and can be deployed in various terrains. Some sources claim that Zadira can also interfere with the electronic systems of enemy aircraft and missiles. Borisov's remarks indicate that Russia has made significant progress with laser weapons, a trend of considerable interest to other nuclear powers such as the United States and China. Using lasers to blind satellites or even burn them up was once a fantasy from the realm of science fiction. But major powers such as the United States, China, and Russia have been working on variants of such weapons for years. Besides the benefits in conventional warfare of burning up drones, blinding reconnaissance systems have a strategic impact, too, as satellites are used to monitor intercontinental ballistic missiles that carry nuclear weapons. Borisov said that he had just returned from Sarov, a closed town in the Nizhny Novgorod region, once known as Arzamas 16 because it was so secret, which is a center of Russia's nuclear weapons research. He said a new generation of laser weapons using a wide electromagnetic band would ultimately replace conventional weapons. He explained that these weapons would have higher power, longer range, and greater accuracy than existing ones. He also said that they would be cheaper, safer, and more environmentally friendly than conventional weapons that use explosives or chemicals. He added that Russia was not the only country developing such weapons, but that it had a competitive edge over its rivals. He claimed that Russia had unique scientific and technological achievements in the field of laser physics and engineering. He also said that Russia had vast experience in testing and deploying laser weapons in various conditions and scenarios. Putin's February 24th invasion of Ukraine has illustrated the limits of Russia's post-Soviet conventional armed forces, though he says the special military operation is going as planned and will achieve all of Moscow's aims. The invasion has sparked a fierce resistance from the Ukrainian army and volunteers, who have inflicted heavy casualties on the Russian forces. The conflict has also drawn international condemnation and sanctions from the United States and its allies, who have pledged to support Ukraine's sovereignty and territorial integrity. 
The United States has ruled out sending its own or NATO forces to Ukraine, but Washington and its allies have supplied billions of dollars of weapons to Kyiv, such as drones, howitzer heavy artillery, anti-aircraft stinger, and anti-tank javelin missiles. These weapons have given Ukraine a significant advantage over the Russian-backed separatists in the eastern regions of Donbas and Luhansk. They have also helped Ukraine to defend its borders and airspace from the Russian aggression. Putin casts such large arms shipments as part of a broader plan by the United States to destroy Russia and has promised that it will never succeed. He accused the United States of trying to encircle Russia with NATO bases and missile defense systems and of interfering in its domestic affairs. He also claims that the United States wants to prevent Russia from developing its own strategic weapons and maintaining its global influence. What do you think about this? Let us know down in the comments section.